Now, so far, we've been able to make the table from scratch, but many times you might have existing data, and I'd like to show you how to start to import existing data into your Access database. So I want to show you uh, a few. <clears throat> so far, we've been able to make the table from scratch, but a lot of times you already have existing data, and you want to be able to import that existing data into your Access database. So let's see how we can do that. In this case, I'm going to pick on the external data tab and then we'll pick on new data source. And you'll, you'll start to see that Access is compatible with many different file types. So if I pick on the from file, we can get something from Excel. HTML is a website. XML is a data source that might be on the internet. Uh, we have text files, which is also where we would get a CSV file. From database is uh, Access or SQL Server or Microsoft Azure or even the, the uh, old style DBase files. Online services include SharePoint, Microsoft Dynamics, even Salesforce is there now, other data services. And then uh, in this case, we have other data sources where we have ODBC data sources and even Outlook. So most of your data types that are out there will fall into one of those categories. So let's try a text file first. So I'll pick on from file and I'll say text file. Then you would point to your text file on your computer. So the first thing I will do is point to my text file. So I'll pick on browse and then you would put uh, like a text file or a CSV it has some different data types down here that you can use. So I'll pick on my desktop and I'll pick on the class files folder and I have one that's called leads. Okay. And you can see when I move my mouse to the word leads, it says it's a text document. It's a plain unformatted data file. So I'll pick on that one and I'll pick on open. Now we can either import it to a new table that'll make a copy of that data and make a new table in access. If you already have an existing table in Access, you can append it to the existing table. And then if you link it, that means it'll make a new table in Access. And then uh, if we change the text file, it will change Access as well. We'll do some links in a little while. Let's do imports first. So we'll pick on import and I'll click on OK. Now, a, a text file has to be handled in a special way. It's either going to be delimited or fixed width. Delimited means there's a character between each field. Maybe it's a comma or a semicolon. Oh, and then fixed width is where the fields are always in the same location. And this one is delimited. So I'll pick on next. Now, uh, you want to pick one of these uh, delimiters. This one happens to be a tab. So as soon as I pick on tab, we can see now we have nice even columns of data. If you ever see a CSV file, which is a really popular format, the C means comma. All right, so for a CSV file, you would pick on comma. If you're not sure which one it is, you can try the different ones. Clearly, this one is not semicolon. This one is not comma. The space is not bad, but tab clearly was the right choice. Uh, now, if you notice the data, the first row does have my field names. So go ahead and check that. Usually that is the case, not always, but usually it is. And then you can see what happened. These will be the field names in the Access database as well. So I'm going to pick on Next. Now, uh, you could change the field names if you wanted to in the Access database. So as a matter of fact, since we're here, I'll get rid of those spaces. Other databases don't like spaces. So even though Access likes spaces in the uh, data name or it will allow them, I kind of be consistent with other databases. So I'll, I'll go through all the fields and see if there's any other that have spaces in the field names. I think that's the only one. Okay, oh, business experience. So I'll click on that one and get rid of the space there as well. Good. Now, uh, in this case, you can actually change the field name or the data type. You can make that field indexed in the Access database, or you can just skip that field and not import it. So you can do that field by field. I'll pick on next. Now, here it's talking about the primary key again. Microsoft Access recommends that you define a primary key for your new table. A primary key is used to uniquely identify each record in your table. 
It allows you to retrieve data more quickly. We can let Access add a primary key that'll add one of those auto number fields. If you already have a, a, a unique field in that table, you would choose your own primary key, or we could say no primary key. In this case, I'm gonna let Access add the primary key, and it'll put one of those auto number fields in there, as you can see. I'll pick on next. And now that's it for the wizard. Now, this is asking for the table name as it's going to appear in Access. So I can use the same name or I can give it a different name. I'm going to pick on the Finish. Now, it says it finished importing that file into a table called Leads. Now, if you think you're going to import from that file again in the future, then you can save the import steps. Uh, and then to get back to the saved ones, you would pick on saved imports up here under the external data. So you would only have to use that if you think you're gonna import from that same source again. And then the next time you do it, you can just use the import steps and it'll be a lot quicker. I'm gonna pick on close there. Now it made a new table that's called leads. Let's go into that table. I'm gonna double click on that table and notice how it has the same kind of data from the text file. So we were able to import that very easily. Now, one thing I'd like to change here, I'm going to right click on that or right, uh, right click on that tab and pick on design view. Good. Usually I would give it a different name for the, um, for the primary case. So let's call that one lead ID. And then you can see how it's an auto number. And uh, now if we wanted to, we can get really consistent with those field names, right? So uh, I could have done that in the other screen as well. But we'll just make sure those are all capitals, just to be consistent. So again, I'm using Design View to change the field names. In this case, I'll even have another capital there for this one as well. And then for this one. Okay, good. And then we can change the data types if we needed to as well. So that imported that data right from the text file. Let's close that window. And of course, we'll save the new design. Good. Let's import a file from Microsoft Excel. So I'll pick on external data. I'll pick on new data source. And I'll say from file. And you're going to see that Excel and Access work very well together. So I'll pick on Excel. Then we're on this screen again. So before I do anything down here, I'll pick my Excel file first. So I'll pick on the word browse. Now I'm going to use the address file. I'll pick on address and I'll pick on open. Now uh, again, import is going to make a new table in access. It'll be a copy of that data. Append means uh, the table already exists in access. Now let me, let me say something about the append. If you use the append, the table has to already exist in access, and it's only going to import the fields that are the same. Uh, so if you use append, you'll have a table in access, and it's only going to uh, actually use the fields that have the same field name in the Excel spreadsheet. So that's an important fact. And then we'll see what links are in a little while. So we'll pick on import, and I'll click on OK. Now, in this case, you, you would know which data, which data sheet your Excel file is in or which data sheet your data is in on the Excel file. In this case, it's sheet one. Or you can also use those named ranges in Excel as well. So I'll use sheet one. If you look at the information here, you can see how those field names are on the first row again. That's going to be important for the next uh, screen. So I'll pick on next. And Microsoft Access can use your column headings as field names for your table. Does the first row contain your column headings? In this case, it does. So we'll use those field names again. I'll pick on Next. Now, again, we can change those field names here. So I might as well do that here, like just to be consistent, right? So I'll make it capital F. Uh, we'll use capital L there. You, you can see what I'm doing. And then if they have spaces like this one does, we'll also get rid of the spaces. So you do a little bit of cleanup, no problem. Of course, I can always do this later on in Design View as well, but I try to stay consistent with these field names. Address is already good. 
Now, uh, I know what this table is. So uh, I'm going to skip this field. See where it says proper address? I'm going to skip that field. So that means it's not going to be imported into Access. City is fine. For the state, I'll pick in the state. I'll just call it state without the province there. That'll be fine. Uh, zip, I'll just change it to say zip code. Phone is fine. Area code. Now, I don't actually need these four other fields. So I'm going to click this one and not import it to access. I'll pick on this one and not import it. I'll pick on this one and not import it. And pick on this one and that not import it. So on this screen, I can change the field names of each field. I can make them an indexed field in the access table. I can uh, change the data type if we needed to. And we can choose not to import those fields. So you saw how I made some of those changes. We'll pick on next. Once again, I'm going to let Access add the primary key, and that'll add one of those auto number fields in. I'll pick on Next. And now this time, I want to give it a better table name. So I'll type in Addresses, and that'll be the Access table name. And I'll pick on Finish. It was able to import that Excel file, call it Addresses. I could save the import steps if I think I was going to use that again. So I'll pick on Close. Now we have a table called addresses. I'm going to double click that and it looks pretty good. And notice how it only imported the fields that I asked for and it skipped those other fields. And you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to change that field name. Uh, I'm going to right click on the uh, tab and I'll pick on design view and I'll call the field name address ID. See, if you left them with the name uh, ID, it might, get, it, it might get confused when you start to make relationships with other tables. So I like to give that a, a more specific name. Good, I guess I forgot to uh, change that, that first name there and the last name. Good, so I'm gonna close that window and I'm gonna save that table. So we import it from a text file and then we import it from an, access, uh, a, an Excel file. Let's import from a larger database now, to make this one work, you have to coordinate with your IT team. If you're not the IT team yourself, you have to ask for what we call an ODBC connection to that database. So your IT team will set that up for you. So this will be uh, maybe SQL Server or Oracle or some of the larger databases would require an ODBC connection. So your IT team will set that up for you. Watch how we'll import those. So I'll pick on external data, new data source, this time I'll say from other sources and I'll say ODBC database. ODBC means open data, open data, excuse me, open database connection, which means that it can share data with other uh, databases. SQL Server is a really famous one, Oracle, SAP, SAS. There's a ton of them and they all work the same way. So I'm gonna click that. We're gonna import. Pretty soon I'll show you how to do the links. Click on OK. Now this is where you would get the help of your IT team. I'll pick on machine data source. And you know, these are the ones I have on this computer. When you do it at work, you'll have a different list here. So I'll pick on SQL Server, which, which I have on this computer. Now sometimes it may ask you for your username and password, and you would ask for that for your IT team as well. So it's trying to connect to that. These are all the tables in that database. So your IT team will tell you which tables are necessary for your needs. So I'll pick on the products table and I'll click on OK. And now it pulled the products table into our access database and then I'll pick on close. And now we see a table that's called DBO products. And that'll be an exact copy of the data from the larger database. This table looks pretty good. Yeah, no problem with that one as far as the field names. And it's already called product ID. So I want to make sure that is the primary key of that table. I'll go back to design view. Now, right now, that is not the primary key. So if I wanted to make that field a primary key, I'm going to right click on that field and I'll pick on primary key there. That's going to make sure that they're all going to be unique. And then the other field names look fine and the data types. I'm going to close that window and we'll say yes to save that. So that was importing from a larger database. Now I'm also going to import from another access database. We're going to, we're going to go from access to access with this one. 
the reason that you would want to do that is maybe to make a copy of another database so I can maybe work with this uh, as test data and not interrupt the production data. So let's see how we can import from an access database. Once again, I'll pick on external data and I'll pick on new data source and I'll pick on from, uh, from database. And here I can get access, SQL Server, Microsoft Azure. We can even get those, uh, those classic uh, DBase files. So let's go with access. You're gonna to point to your access file. So I'll pick on browse. Now these files that I'm importing, the text file, the Excel file, and the access database, I've included with this course. So you should be able to use the same examples. So I'll pick on the tables database. I'll pick on open. This time I'll do an import. And on the next lesson of this course, we'll show you what the link means. Pick on OK. Now, because that's an access database, I can actually import the tables, the queries, the forms, reports, the macros, and the modules, or any combination of those. So I'm going to get all the tables here. I can pick one table at a time, or I can say select all. All right, so it's going to import all of those tables from that database into this database. It's basically going to make a copy of those tables. So then I can work with those as test data. So I'll pick on OK. And now we see uh, when I pick on close, now we have all of these tables in our database. Now I have copies of those tables, so I don't have to interrupt uh, production. That's why you would do that. So when we get to the queries and forms and reports courses, then uh, it's going to use those same tables. So we can uh, import, when I pick on external data, I can import from text files, Excel, even XML and web pages. I can import from access databases like we just did, SQL Server, Microsoft Azure, the DBase files. We can import from SharePoint, Microsoft Dynamics, even Salesforce, other data services are out there. And then ODBC is one I showed you and uh, we could do Outlook as well. So that's how we import data from other sources into our access database.